Morgan, everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown, and we're gathered about the ringside here, ready to go with another big day of championship wrestling, and it is a biggie day. Ooh, it is indeed. We'll start things off with a single match, then we'll bring in the Fantastics. They will be here in a tag team match today. A little bit later on, hey, should be a good match. We'll have Billy Travis, David Haskins teamed on one side. On the other side, it's going to be that team of Buddy Landell and Dutch Mantell. And that's not all. Dirty Rhodes is here today, and a Southern Heavyweight Championship match as Bill Superstar Dundee will be in here with the belt. Puts it on the line. I got to tell you, we'll have some comments about that. In addition to that, meeting a brand new wrestler on Championship Wrestling. He's not a brand new wrestler, but a brand new wrestler on uh, Championship Wrestling here today. We'll be seeing Larry Hamilton, known as the Irresistible Gent. He'll be making an appearance. You'll be impressed with his background. We'll be back with that first round of action and Larry Hamilton in just a moment. Set to go with this one fall 15 minute time limit match. Introducing for parts unknown at 218 pounds, the Invader. Going against him from Tampa, Florida, 232 pounds, Larry Hamilton. This match will be one fall 15 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Bell time, and we're off and running as Larry Hamilton makes his debut on our championship wrestling against Jim Jameson. Larry, kind of an impressive background, Dave. He uh, has an excellent amateur record. He was a two-time champion in Jacksonville, Florida. He also, uh, look at that drop kick. Boy, he's up in the air and pounded Jameson good. He, in his junior year, he won at University of Tampa. He won the uh, National Collegiate uh, title out in North Dakota. One, two, and the Invader had uh, now. So he's got quite an amateur background. Boy, he does indeed. Quite a collegiate background there. And he looks impressive so far against this Invader that uh, he's going against. Put that arm up behind the back. Drops down with the knee and the lower part of the leg. The invader hasn't been able to make much of a move on him. Hamilton's got uh, got, got good size, 232 pounds. Looks like he's it's fairly well distributed on that frame too. He was part one half of the U.S. Uh, tag champions at one point. He and Pistol Pez Watley were partners uh, when they won those tag titles. And it's kind of interesting because Pez had such a great amateur background himself. Larry Hamilton. Boy, he's stretching out that, uh, that shoulder. The invader on his knees. Oh. Uh, I think it, yeah, trying to get back on his feet. He's there, but not in very good shape. Hamilton hooked the arm, took him down. Shoulders were down briefly, but the invader able to uh, get one shoulder up. Didn't do him much good because that, that wrist lock that Hamilton has on him is a punishing hole. I'll tell you something else that was down, too, was his head. When he hooked that wrist and, and took him over with it, he slammed his head right down into that mat and left the invader a little stunned. Ooh, what a drag. Yeah, the invader finds himself right back on the mat. He's been struggling through this whole thing. Two and a half minutes gone now. Larry Hamilton, pretty much in control of the situation. Southern heavyweight title match, in case you missed it a little earlier. That'll be coming up later on in our championship wrestling today. Mm. Invader nails him. We'll see the fantastic in operation also. Aha! Down on the mat goes the Invader. Well, the Invader had a moment, but Hamilton takes control again. The Invader off the ropes. Suplex down to the mat. Count as one, two, and three. Dynamite action as Larry Hamilton nailed that belly to belly suplex, slammed the Invader down. I got the one, two, three. That son of a gun is even more devastating almost than a power slam because you've got your whole weight coming mm -hmm. down on top. 
And it was a, an impressive win for a guy, as we said, with impressive credentials. Larry Hamilton, the time again, Dave? Three minutes even. Three minutes straight up and down. That's just a bit of it. We've got more and back to it in a moment. <laughs> Wednesday night, the action at the Evansville Coliseum. You are going to love six matches, and I mean dynamite, outstanding matches. Hair against the mask with no disqualification. That's going to be a dandy. Mid-America title match, Buddy Landell, barbed wire match, tape fist match, loser leave town. We'll get to them one by one in a moment. Mid-America title, Buddy Landell, the nature boy, holding that title in there against Tracy hey, Smothers. Mike Russell, you're looking at the cock of the wops in Evansville, Indiana, Jack. If you, let me just tell you something. Tracy Smothers, if you blink, you'll miss it. Well, you heard it from Landell. We'll uh, see what happens Wednesday uh, night. Boy, you better have confidence. Barbed right. wire around that ring. Coco Webb barking and I help Buddy Landell cheat him out of that belt. Well, that's a lie, Jack, and I don't like barbed wire fences because I got something that you don't have to wear. That's a pretty face, and I don't want nobody rubbing up against it. Not you, Daddy. Well, I'm taking you out just like I did Curtin and Jerry. What's his name? Mm, Dutch Mantel going in a tape Well, the match. uninformed Dutch Mantel is still the international heavyweight champion. I'm going to remain so as long as I want to be. Now, I don't know what's wrong with Kate Casey. Obviously, he's got brain damage from me knocking his brains out so much. But, Casey, we're going to tape our fist up one time and one time only. Put your car in short-term parking because it ain't going to take me a long time to knock you out. Final match going to be no disqualification, no time. This is it, Jonathan. Loser, leave town. <laughs> Sheep herders and the fantastic. This is where we separate the men from the boys. And we all know who the boys are, don't we? Even you call yourself a good old southern boy. Well, we're men where we come from. Men down under and we're not leaving anywhere, I'm guarantee you that. We're here to stay, and I'll tell you why we're not leaving. We see Billy Dundee run people off left, right, and center, and his pockets are getting fat, full of Yankee bloody money, and I want that Yankee money. I'm not outside the ring to watch my men lose. I'm outside the ring just in case you turn your back. Because if you turn your back on me, your hat's going to belong to me and the rest of your body. You're leaving, Fantastics. Bye, yo. Oh, yeah. Fantastics. Bobby Bolden, Tommy Rogers. We're going to tell you a little more about the fantastic date with the Fantastics uh, following their match. I have something to say right now. You know, I'm sick and tired of being called a loser. I'm tired of losing. You know, I've been training real hard lately in the gym and in the ring, and I know I've been looking at a lot of films, and I know we can beat the Fantastics right here today, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to beat the Fantastics. Pat Rose and I, I will win this match today, so you people just sit back and get ready because you're going to see Tony Falk win his first match on TV. Well, okay, Tony. That's a positive attitude, but I just got to tell you, you got a big hill to climb. These guys have been going very well. This is going to be one fall, 15-minute time limit. Introducing at a total of 455 pounds from St. Louis, Missouri, in the red row. That is Tony Falk, his partner from Pensacola, Florida, Pat Rose. And going against him at a total weight of 449 pounds. From the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, Bobby Fulton, Tommy Rogers, the Fantastic. One fall, 15-minute time limit. The referee is Jerry Calhoun. Let's see, looks like Pat Rose is going to start for the uh, team of Rose and Falk over here. Starting out with their number one gun on this side of the ring. Tommy Rogers, Bobby Fulton choose Rogers to go. And it's Rose and Rogers as an opener, Davey. Should be a good match. Tommy Rogers. Whoa. Pat Rose slipped around behind him, took him down to the mat. Look at Tommy Rogers move. One thing you'll notice about the Fantastics, if you haven't already, they are fast. Good, quick moves. Pat Rose over to the rope. 
hooks a right arm over the bottom rope. Referee's right there, calls for a break, and Tommy Rogers backs away. Rose, stocky wrestler, outweighs Tommy Rogers. Both of them going with the ropes, getting the momentum. Rose lets Rogers go by. Rose goes by again. Oh, Pat Rose got him with a right hand. He put that fist right on Rogers' chin. Pat Rose climbing the ropes. He's up on the top one. The referee is warning him. He jumps down into the ring and then goes after Tommy Rogers again with a right fist. Got him up in the air. A body slam by Rose. Pat Rose so far has things going his way. Well, he figures it worked the first time. Let's try it again. He's climbing the ropes. Tommy Rogers over. Grabs him while he's in the air. And just throws him out into the middle of the ring. Pat Rose bounces halfway across the ring. Tommy, good. Heads up wrestling there. Tags Bobby Fulton. Bobby lands on the left arm. And Pat Rose has been slowed somewhat anyway. One minute, 40 seconds into the action. A little hair pulling by Pat Rose. Fulton off the rope, shoulder butt. Nice one. Rose sets, rolls Fulton to the mat. He's going to drop in the elbow, but Fulton it moves. Fulton, nice, nice takedown of Pat Rose. Over to the corner of the tag on Tommy Rogers. This is the way the match started. Tommy Rogers against Pat Rose. So far, we have yet to see Pat Rose's partner, Tony Falk, in the match. There's the tag, and here comes Tony Falk. Falk out of St. Louis, greeted by Tommy Rogers as he sent him flying through the air. Tommy holds him there, and Bobby Fulton lands on that left arm. Falk making the prediction before the match that he's going to get his first television victory here with his partner Pat Rose today. Round behind him, it's Fulton. Oh, he's going to drop him to the mat. Falk hung on to the rope. Bobby Fulton. Not outsmarted at all. He just kept his balance and kept Mr. Falk on the mat. Corner, the tag. Tommy Rogers spins him around, grabs the arm, and takes Tony Falk down to the mat. Three minutes gone. The Fantastics. Looking good here. Tommy Rogers in the ring. Bobby Fulton out on the apron. Air pulling by Falk. Rogers pulled into the corner. Right fist. Tony Falk reversed into the turnbuckles. Tommy Rogers flips it out of there. Falk says, uh, had enough, time out. Falk did not go for the tag. He stays in there against Tommy Rogers. Fantastics, tagging out quickly, keeping the fresh man in the ring. Air pulling again by Tony Falk, but he gets him over to the corner and the tag on Pat Rose. Rose back in to battle Fulton. Rose drops with the upper arm. Action fast and furious here. Pat Rose. Whips Fulton into the turnbuckles and then clotheslines him as he bounced out of the corner. A cover by Rose. Counts at one, two. Two counts all he gets. Body slam. Pat Rose. Through the corner. On the middle rope. Right fist across the side of the face. Count is at one. One count as well. A two count fell. Technically, I think that shoulder was up before the two count was uh, on the mat, though. Doesn't really matter. The important thing is it wasn't a three count. Bobby Fulton being choked from behind. Tony Falk will be coming in after the tag. Tommy Rogers trying to get in and keep that even, that double team over in the corner against the uh, Fantastics. That's about the third time that's happened today. Tony Falk. 
fires Bobby Fulton into the ropes. Got him with the upper arm. Whoa, Fulton. He saw him coming and got him with his foot. Balk using that fist again. The referee is there calling for a break. He got a quick break. It's, that was enough. Stop it. Reverse neck breaker by Tony Falk. Fulton. In some trouble right now. Close line by Falk. Falk goes for the pin. Count is one, two. Two's all he gets. Could not get the three count. Falk's upset with himself for not being able to get the three count. Or I don't know if he's upset with himself. He's upset because he was thinking he did, in fact, have his first TV victory under his belt here. But the action continues. Pat Rose comes in after the tag. Fulton unable to get to the corner to make the tag on Tommy Rogers. Tommy was complaining to the referee that Bobby was hit in the throat with a point of the fingers by Pat Rose. Suplex. He stood him straight up in the air. There's a cover by Pat Rose. Bobby Fulton. Hooks him down. Count is one, but he can't make it stick either as Pat Rose broke out of it. He had him down in a small package, but couldn't keep him there. We're coming up on the seven-minute mark. Seven minutes gone in this match. Bobby Fulton, Pat Rose, exchanging right hands. Rose with a tag. Here's Tony Falk. Versus Fulton. Fulton with a knee lift coming off the ropes. Tommy Rogers reaching for the tag. Bobby Fulton gets the tag. And here he comes. Drop kick over the ropes. What a move. Tommy Rogers going after both of them now. Fulton has Tony Falk in the corner. Tommy Rogers has Pat Rose. The Fantastics. Run them together in the middle of the ring. We've got to do the do -si do and uh, Tony Falk on the mat. Tommy Rogers up on the middle rope. Bobby Fulton holding Falk. The Rogers rocket. Count of three. Got it. Fantastic. In seven minutes, 55 seconds, have themselves another win. Tony Falk and his partner Pat Rose have themselves another loss. They call that the Rogers Rocket as he comes flying off that second rope. And I mean out there and splashed him, but good. Excellent win for the Fantastics. Bobby, congratulations on a good one, partner. Oh, man, I'll tell you. You really got at it, and when you had to, fired it down. I got the one, two, three. We're going to give you a chance to uh, kind of catch your breath here because... That was, that was a tough match you had going there. And I do want to remind you about uh, everybody about the fantastic date with the Fantastics. And we talked about it for the first time last week. And by golly, I'll tell you what, we really appreciate the response everybody sent in, Bobby. Yes, sir, Mr. Russell. I understand Young and Associates received 400 letters already. So let me say this right now. Two girls have got a chance, just not one. And we want everybody to send in their little essay because we're so excited about this date thing. Me and Tommy just can't wait for it. Let me review the rules one more time. Right. It's eligible for any any uh, of the ladies who are 18 and older and single out there to send in why I would like a date with the Fantastics in 100 words or less. A company, a, a, send a picture in accompanying your, uh, your little dissertation in there of why I would like a date with the Fantastics and send it to Fantastic Date with the Fantastics, WMC right. TV, 1960 Union Avenue, Memphis, Tennessee, 38104. And be certain that you uh, put on the envelope with the address, put Fantastics Date, so that it will not get mixed up with other mail and delayed and not being considered and so forth. So far, it has been going very, very well, very impressive, as a matter of fact, particularly since Buddy Landell came out here and did his... Uh, every time you mention that name, Les, seems like every time you mention that name, he comes walking out here. What is this? Is this the Buddy, Buddy Landell hour? I'm no Lance Russell. I'm getting sick and tired of every, every time that I take a 
you know, take a, uh, out of my busy schedule to come out here and show my pretty face on TV. These two punks come out here trying to take my TV time up. Look at them. You can see why the women around the area are starved for the sight of a real man. They're huffing and puffing. Boys. They just finished girls, a tough match, hey, buddy. Hey, whatever. You can make excuses up for them, Lance Russell, if you want to, okay? The bottom line is they're sitting here with their tongues hanging out their mouth. Don't worry. I'm used to it. All the girls do it, so you go right ahead, Tommy and Bobby, okay? Look. The bottom line, hey, you keep on running your mouth, and I'm going to knock your teeth out, and you're going to be sucking soup for about six weeks in the hospital. Lance Russell, hey, 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 the bottom line is, Lance Russell, tell them how the Nature Boy is blowing them away and they win a date with the Nature Boy contest, okay? Well, buddy, you're the one that brought it up, but out of the uh, little better than 400 letters that have come in, uh, the Fantastics have a slight edge. As a matter of fact, you have only gotten two <laughs> responses for the date with Buddy Landell. Hey, you ask. I didn't. I wasn't saying anything about it. You're the one that brought it up. You know, Lance Russell, I thought that you were, were a professional, okay? Now, obviously, this thing is being rigged, okay? Now, there might be three or four hundred sweat hogs out there that want, that want them to babysit them. But I know there's some real women around the area that needs the nature boy, okay? Girls, we're talking about a 60-minute man in and outside the ring, okay? Now, I'm not going to come out here and pat myself on the back. I'm not going to come out here and talk about how good-looking I am or what kind of a great hell of a wrestler I am because why come out here and waste precious TV time repeating the obvious, really? okay? Mm -hmm. But Lance Russell, that last week, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you uh, the benefit of the doubt, okay? Obviously, you didn't put the Nature Boy Buddy Landell address up there, okay? Now, I want you to put it up there right now, and I'm not going to be responsible when the place is bombarded. When the place is Just, bombarded. There it is, buddy. Well, Take a look. Now, I don't want to hear any conversation. There it is. Buddy Landell date, WMC TV 5, 1960 Union Avenue, Memphis 38104. But be sure and label it Buddy Landell date if you want to be in Buddy Landell's column. All right, now the wheels are rolling, Lance Russell. Now we can get things settled. It's like I said, girls, I'm a 60-minute man in and outside the ring, if you know what I'm talking about, okay? okay. If you can handle that, all right, Lance Russell? Yeah, I hear it. I the hear bottom it. line is the women around the area starve for the sight of a real man, and that's why I brought it upon myself to come out here and show my pretty face on TV, okay? Oh, that is right. charming, charming. Yeah, Mr. Russell, I think we've all learned one thing, buddy. You're not conceited. You're not conceited. You're convinced. Hey, hey, wait Give me that mic. Okay, you girls want a date with them? I remember when you wanted a date, the fabulous ones, and we made them look like bloody men. And now we're going to make these look like men. They got the titles, but I'm going to tell you something, they're not going to have them long. I promised Booba he'd be a champion, and he's going to be a champion, and I promise you go. Let's see if he can help these fellas. Man, that is sad. Sick is the word for it. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take a break and, and uh, we'll be back with more championship wrestling in a moment. Championship wrestling coming that way. You put that down February the 20th, Borden, Indiana. Wow, Wednesday night. You've heard about some of it. By golly, we got a great night of action coming in there. Mid-America title match with Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Barbed wire match with Dundee and Coco. Dutch Mantel and Rick Casey in a tape fist match. The Fantastics and the Sheep Herders in a no disqualification loser leave town. Let's hear a few words from Coco about that uh, barbed wire match. Well, you see a barbed wire fence. That's a dangerous match ever ever sign. And Dundee, I can't wait to get you in that barbed wire fence because you know what? You can't get out, Dundee. When it get real hot and heavy, you can't jump out of the ring and take five. And you know what? Your punk's friends can't help you at all. They can't climb in the ring at all. Nobody but you and myself. So Dundee, you might as well get ready because you're going to take the beating of your life coming from the bird man and I can't wait to get you in the ring. 
Boy, I'll tell you what, if I were getting ready to wrestle against Buddy Landell and Dutch Mantella, I don't know whether I'd be as bubbling as Billy, as Billy Travis is up there or not. He's that kind of a guy, though. He is indeed. He's waiting for him, and here are the opponents stepping up onto the apron and into the ring right now for this one fall 15-minute time limit match. Introducing, at a total weight of 465 pounds for Memphis, Tennessee, David Haskins. His partner now living in Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, by golly, there goes Hamden, Connecticut. That's right. Yeah, Lexington, Billy's Kentucky. New home is Lexington, Kentucky. Billy Travis. And going against him at a total weight of 453 pounds from Oil Trough, Texas, Dutch Mantel. And from Los Angeles, Buddy Landell, the Nature Boy. This match will be one fall, 15 minute time limit match. Jerry Calhoun, the referee, and we're underway with Dutch Mantell going against Billy Travis. They tie it up, Travis and Mantell. And a little mare down on Dutch. Dutch is out of it, right back on their feet, squaring off. Boy, what a couple of competitors those two guys are, huh? Yeah. Oh, well, we've mentioned before, there's a handful of hair, and he really snapped him off his feet. Uh, Travis, young as he is, uh, one of his great assets is his, his aggressiveness. The son of a gun just doesn't seem to be afraid of anybody or anything. And he really is an aggressive wrestler. Buddy Landell trying to take a little of that aggression out of him, marries him down, but Travis kicks out right back up on his feet again. I, know, I think Landell was complaining he had his hair pulled or something. I don't know what uh, what all that discussion was in the ring, but there was some. Excellent fireman's carry throw from Landell. You know, because sometimes we don't have an agreement about how you should uh, wrestle, and uh, they may think you can break the rules, and that's fine, and we don't think that. That doesn't mean we don't recognize the fact that they can wrestle a lot of these guys, and that's true with Landell, and certainly Mantel. We've said that on a jillion occasions. They can wrestle. Too bad they don't stick to wrestling. That's true. If they, would, if they would do that, they'd have no problem, right? That's right. No problem, certainly, with our commentary about it. But there, he grabs the hair, he jabs him right in the eyes. Mantel doesn't need that. He is a top-flight wrestler. So is Buddy Landell. Look at Haskins battling his way back. Takes a shot with the arm, knee to the midsection. David trying to wheel away at that midsection. Is snap mared over the shoulder. Tag on Dutch Mantell. Whoa, the pace is picking up, Dave. Oh, it is. Dutch Mantell right back in there to work on Haskins. by Haskins. He got out of the way and tags Billy Travis. Down the ropes very fast to tag Travis and Hot Properties is back in there. Woo! The Dutchman nails him with a forearm. Tags the Nature Boy and back in again is Landell slugging away and I use the word to describe exactly what is happening. Billy Travis right upside the head. Woo! Look at that Landell go. Hip toss and over the top goes Billy Travis. Dutch catches Travis with an elbow, makes the cover one, two, and Travis gets out at the count of two. David Haskins trying to get a little crowd support and he's getting it for Billy Travis in there. Whoa. Travis blocked the right fist that Mantell was throwing. Mantell just drives him back into the ropes, tags Buddy Landell. And the Nature Boy comes in throwing the right fist too. Dutch made a pretty good tackle as he drove that shoulder into the body and hooked him and drove him right into the turnbuckles. Landell takes over, pops him down on the floor. Landell and Mantell both making liberal use of the fist here today. Three minutes, 45 seconds into the action. One fall only, 15 minutes, the overall time limit. Southern Heavyweight Championship match still to come today. A 
couple of parting shots from Landell as he had tagged out to Dutch. And Travis needs to turn it around right here. Because I'll tell you what, Mantell and the Nature Boy are flat getting it on. And Travis down on the deck. Look at that. Nature Boy chin locks him, snaps him down with kind of a reverse face lock. Mandel out here moaning about the fantastic. He, uh, I think he was a little chagrined that he only got two votes in the date with a Buddy Landell as opposed right. to the 400 that the Fantastics got. Billy Travis back up on his feet. He would like very much to get a tag on David Haskins, but he's a long way away, all the way across the ring. Here's Mantell, knee lift to the midsection. Kick out. He almost had it. He had, uh, had a good two count there before Travis kicked out. There's that tag on Haskins. David comes in. He's fresh and ready to get it on. Fired away. Snap the Dutchman into a side headlock. Gets thrown off. Puts a shoulder in. Oh, boy. Dutch really caught him unawares. What a whale of a match we've got going. Haskins jerked back down on with that big elbow. Going for the figure four leg lock. His trademark, Landell. That's gonna be it. Nobody's fool, David Haskins says, another day, but not today. And he succumbs to that figure four leg lock. The winners will be Dutch Mantell, Buddy Landell. And the time, five minutes, 56 seconds. The referee finally unpiles him and gets him off of it as Mantell and Landell raise their arms. Travis over to help out his partner. Boy, we'll be looking for more of that action later on. They win it. Mantell and Landell will be back in a moment. That's Keith Eric, and there comes uh, Dirty Road stepping up on the ring apron right there. This is going to be a one fall 15 minute time limit match from Memphis, Tennessee at 206 pounds on the left. Keith Eric, and going against him from Austin, Texas, 301 pounds, Dirty Roads. This match will be one fall 15 minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun is the referee. We will do that. We will ring the bell as Dirty will be getting off and running against Keith. Dirty will be a heavy, heavy favorite in this match. In a lot, lot of ways than one. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Boy, he is. he has uh, got some size, doesn't he? He does. He's weighs in out at over 300 pounds. Last time we uh, saw him in the territory here, he was down around, I don't know, 265, 267. Mere shadow of him. Mere shadow, yes. But uh, now over 300 pounds and proud of it. Dirty Rose. He there is on his shoulder. He just slams him down to the mat. Almost a 100-pound weight advantage for Dirty Rhodes. Favorite going in here. He living up to the roll as he buries that great big elbow. Right on top of the head of Keith Eric, drops him down on the deck, slips in behind, just masses him down there. He just put his size on top of him and drove him into the mat. Has him covered up. He's not really looking for a pin. He's trying to take some of the uh, fight out of Keith Eric to get him in a position to pin. Leg on the rope, and that puts Keith Eric back on his feet again after a uh, one count. Keith Eric going to have to figure out some way to get Dirty Rhodes first off his feet and then hold those shoulders down for a three count if he has any hope of taking this one. Again, Keith Eric on the mat. Not in a pin position, though. Dirty Rhodes wrapping that left arm. Got a little twist on it. Backs Keith to the ropes. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. We were in a position, Dave, from our angle, perfect angle as he popped that upper on him. He says, bye-bye. And was by right. golly, he was right. I'll tell you that for a fact. 
Minute 50 seconds, 150. Dirty Rhodes getting the win. Dirty had it his way all the way, and he'll do that most of the time he's in the ring. Keith Eric finding, finding out much too much experience, much too much size. The winner, Dirty Rose. Back in a moment. Ooh, Wednesday night, just sitting here looking. We got a hair against the mask with no disqualification. Mid America title match. We've got a tape fist match, a barbed wire match, a loser leave town with the Fantastics and the Sheep Herders. Wow, tape fist match. Dutch Mantel, Rick Casey, mean kind of match, Rick. That's right, Dutch Mantel. You know we've been we've been all over this place. We've had all kind of matches, Daddy. But the last time we were in Evansville, you cost me something that I worked very hard for, and that's that international belt. I had you beat there the last time, Mantel. I had you beat. And you hit me with something, and I know it wasn't just a fist, because it turned my lights out, brother. Now, this time we're coming back, Lance, and we're both going to be taped, taped up. up. We're going to equal the odds, Mantel. I'm going to have tape on my fist, and you're going to have tape on yours. If you've ever been hit with a pair of brass knuckles, then you'll know what kind of match this is. This is a very brutal match, Lance, and in Evansville, Indiana, Dutch Mantel, I know you know I can beat you. And I'm going to show you right there in Evansville, Indiana. That's what it's all about Wednesday night. More you talking about being about. This is it. Loser leave town, no disqualification, sheep herders, and these fantastics in the ring. Let me tell you something, Mr. Russell. You know, after we stayed in the middle of that ring and sang Walsing Matilda, brother, like we are, men of our words, and we did that, Jonathan Boyd, and then you came out there and hit us in the head with the chairs. What do you take us for, a couple idiots? Well, this time, brother, it's going to be all over. Like I said before, you know, we're here to stay and not to play, and that's exactly what we're we're going to do with you sheep herders. No disqualification. Lose or leave town, brother. Let's fire it up, Evansville. Fire it up. God bless America. The Fantasies are coming. Boy, beat us like a dog. Anything you want. Because, Tommy, I got one thing to say, brother. We're going to fire it up right there for the people of Evansville, Indiana. And we're going to promise you this. Sheep herders, you're going to be history after this night, brother. That's right, Bobby. You know, Evansville, Indiana is not too big enough for both of us. And sheep herders, you've done something to us that nobody's ever done before. You think you got somebody fired up? Well, you're right. You do. You got the attention of both of us. Well, you're going to have the attention, the whole undivided attention right there in Evansville, and you're leaving. Express. Dundee with more powder throws it in his eyes. Rick Morton rolling around the ring. Dundee goes after him, picks him up, nails him with a right fist. There he is, the superstar, Bill Dundee, stepping into the ring right now. He has the AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship belt around his waist. And it is on the line in this championship match. It is going to be a Southern title match right here. And young Tracy Smothers' his opponent. Tracy out of Springfield, Tennessee at 223 pounds, challenging for the belt held 
by the man from Australia at 214 pounds, the current holder of the AWA Southern Heavyweight title, Bill Dundee. We were talking about aggression and confidence. This guy probably has more of both than anybody I know of. This Dundee absolutely is so cocky, he, he doesn't conceive that Tracy Smothers is even in the match. He just uh, absolutely is so totally confident of what he can do. And I will have to say, one way or another, he has of recent done most of it. Well, he has. He's got uh, quite an impressive record recently, including uh, capturing that belt to begin with and then defending it. Bill Dundee. Young Tracy Smothers. Tracy is a wrestler who's come a long way in a short period of time, too. Fine young wrestler. There's Dundee's arm up behind him. Got it hammered up there. Bill Dundee down on the mat. Now back on his feet. Over to the ropes. Leans through the ropes, and that means an automatic break. Referee call for it. Tracy Smothers broke it. Double leg and Tracy is in jeopardy. Count of one, two, and he just barely got it out. Bill, looking on the leg, now he breaks that, calmly walks around over to the corner, strolling around the ring. Bill does not appear to be too concerned about, the, uh, no. about this match no. with Tracy Smothers. Precisely uh, living up to the reputation that preceded him when we said he didn't even consider Smothers to be in the match. Dundee, the giant killer. Dundee in the headlock, in the head scissors. There is young Tracy Smothers. Hold is broken. Dundee wants a little applause from the crowd on his ability of, uh, to get out of the hole there. Oh, boy. How much mustard they say it would take to cover up that hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dundee warned about hair pulling, and the uh, referee stepped in between them. Tracy had his right fist doubled. He, referee wanted to calm it down here before it gets out of hand. Dundee around behind, hooked the finger in the trunks, took him down. You know, I think he does some of that just as a matter of irritation and, and enhancing the reputation of what a bad dude he is. Because a lot of that stuff he doesn't have to do, Dave. Oh, that's true. I think you probably got it right on the money there. Dundee runs Tracy right into the ropes. Down on the floor. He's got a 10 count to get back in there. He's just taking his time. Yeah. Going for a stroll. Referee at the five count. Oh boy. Helping the referee count. Oh. I don't know. Dundee better be careful. We've seen uh, champions come in with this sort of attitude before and they walked out of here defeated. And. The man that they were supposed to beat rather easily has uh, ended up fulfilling the championship bookings. Dundee, get a little more serious now. Body slam on Tracy Smothers. Put a boot right in the side of his ear. Tracy kicking out of it. Go oh, out of the ring, through the ropes, down to the floor. Tracy Smothers, there he is on the floor. Dundee just grabbed him and threw him out of there. Tracy, there he comes back to the ring apron. Dundee grabs him before he's through the ropes. Snaps his neck and Tracy again hits the floor. Bill Dundee in control and he knows it. Tracy having some difficulty this time. Now he struggles back up to the uh, to the apron. Dundee comes over again. This time he hammers him with the upper arm. 
Dundee kicks him again down to the floor. Referee's trying to tell Dundee now, come on, let him in the ring. Tracy struggling back up. Now he is through the ropes into the ring and greeted by Dundee who flips him down right in the center of the ring using the fist. There's a cover, one, two counts. All he gets, Tracy able to kick out at the two count. We're coming up on five and a half minutes gone in this one. Back to the bone, baby, let's AWA, Southern Heavyweight Belt on the line. Dundee, victim of a forearm, a good one by Tracy Smothers. Tracy caught the headbutt from Dundee, hammered back in there. Look at Billy go after him. Dundee making him pay for that one, I think. Hey, reversal. Tracy Smothers ran Dundee into the turnbuckles, and Dundee down on the floor. I think what Dundee's doing here is the equivalent of a basketball team calling timeout for the opponent to think about a foul shot. He's just taking a little time, letting Tracy Smothers figure, well, okay, that was a good move for you, Tracy, but look out when I come back in there. Yeah, really. Here he comes. Tracy got his attention, and that uh, can either be looked at as good or bad. Billy right away takes that arm, drives him down in, Smothers rolls over and out and back up. Six and a half minutes gone. AWA Southern Heavyweight uh, title is on the line. Southern Heavyweight Championship match is on the line as Dundee stops to chit chat with some of the folks out there. Referee Jerry Calhoun checking to see how the shoulder was. He wasn't in a position to see that right hand. We saw it perfectly. It was a closed fist and he wrapped him hard. Stinging right hand. Dundee goes for the choco. Whoa! Blisters him hard. for the pin, but he didn't even get a good solid one count out of it. He scrambled away. Smothers popping in into the corner. Dundee out Ooh. while the referee is talking to Smothers. He nailed him with a chain. He got him. We saw it. Yeah, he definitely had a chain wrapped around his hand, threw it out of the ring. Dundee gets the win, though, in 8 minutes, 31 seconds. 8 minutes, 31 seconds, retaining the Southern heavyweight title. He got stirred up when uh, Tracy really started to get the better of him. Nailed him with that chain. The champion is still just that, the champion. We'll be back in a moment. Just hand an AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship match. I would editorialize and say that it was not won in a professional championship manner. It At was least not. that's my opinion. We could see it from over here. The yeah. referee was totally blinded to it when Dundee reached down these tights and grabbed that chain. Well, and from past matches, uh, Dundee has some practice uh, using that chain and then getting rid of it. That's what he did. He hit Tracy Smothers with a chain he had wrapped around his fist, and then he fired it out of the ring and went sliding across the floor under a curtain, and he retrieved it 
after the match was over. But Dundee does retain the AWA Southern Heavyweight title. Larry Hamilton made an impressive start today uh, on championship wrestling, defeating the Invader. The Fantastics won their match over Tony Falk and Pat Rose. Tony Falk still winless. Match, it was a good match. Falk still has not won one on television. Buddy Landell, Dutch Mantel, defeating uh, Billy Travis and David Haskins. Another hard fought battle. Yeah, yeah, what a battle that was. And then I Dirty Rhodes. making comments. No, but, but you're right. Uh, Dirty Rhodes <laughs> defeats uh, Keith Eric rather easily in a little under two minutes, and then Dundee does retain the title again. That was a dandy. As a matter of fact, I liked it. We had mm -hmm. a bunch of good action in there today, and uh, that is nothing unusual. Uh, but we're certainly pleased when we do, in fact, have something we can sit here and really get into, boy, like the uh, bouts that we had. We're going to do it again next week, as a matter here. of fact, right here, same place. We'll be looking for you. For Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.